hello everyone this is yasa and in today's video we're going to talk about salt bridge okay let's talk about salt bridge but first of all let me let you know where salt bridge is used salt bridge is basically used in a galvanic cell okay it is used in a galvanic cell which is a type of electrochemical cell in which chemical energy is converted into electrical energy okay so in galvanic cell the chemical energy is converted into electrical energy let's let's talk about the simple cell okay electrochemical cell suppose here in this compartment this half cell we have zinc rod okay this is the zinc rod okay which is dip, dipped into the zinc solution the solution in this one is zinc it's in salt or zinc and we have another compartment this one which is of copper okay so in this we have this copper rod dipped into the solution of copper 2 plus okay uh, so here basically the salt is taken so here you can have zinc sulfate or you can have zinc ion with any other anion as well and here we have copper sulfate okay now they are connected with each other here you can connect a device called as a meter or a volt meter okay which one will show us the deflection and basically it will show the movement of electron okay the movement of current i am showing if you want to just mention the movement of electron then it will be somewhat opposite to the flow of current which we can show it like this so in this we can show the movement of electron in this way because we all know that if electron moves in this way the current flows in a conventionally opposite direction okay so this shows us the movement of the current and basically the electron moves in the rightward direction okay now this cell this cell is a galvanic cell but there is one thing which is missing and that is called a salt bridge this is the salt bridge this is the salt bridge now question comes why we need to use the salt bridge okay now what will happen if we will not use the salt bridge so we know that there are two reactions taking place that zinc is getting oxidized into zn2 plus plus two electron okay at the same time copper ion is accepting two electron in another compartment and getting reduced to copper so this is basically an oxidation half reaction and this is nothing but the reduction half reaction okay so now what will happen as the reaction starts the concentration of zn2 plus ion will increase in the solution in this compartment the concentration of zn2 plus ion will start increasing and it will not allow the electron to move it will not allow the electron to move so this cell will stop after working so okay it will stop so okay so in order to avoid this in order to avoid this we use the salt bridge so i i i think you might have got the idea that as the cell starts working soon the concentration of zn2 plus ion will increase into the anodic half cell and it will not allow the electron to move to the rightward that is into the cathodic compartment okay so in order to neutralize the concentration of zn2 plus ion basically it develops the potential between the electrode and the solution which does not allow the electron to flow so we need to neutralize the charge over the uh, zn2 plus ion by passing an oppositively charged ion okay which is placed inside the salt bridge now let's talk about the salt bridge in detail okay so basically we come to know that the salt bridge is used in a galvanic cell okay so let's have a diagram of the salt bridge so this is basically our salt bridge which is having electrolyte field inside it 
electrolyte filled inside it with along with agar agar gel and with this uh, after filling all this stuff when it gets converted into the gel form we need to plug the cotton so that electrolyte in the form of gel should not fall okay directly into the container let's talk about the electrolyte which are used inside the electrolytes which are used inside the salt bridge are kcl kno3 k2so4 and ammonium nitrate nh4 no3 no a doubt would come in our mind generally that why only these electrolytes are used so for your kind information you should know that the electrolyte should be inert okay it should not react with either electrode or the electrolytic solution or you can say the metal ion okay it should not react with both of them okay that's what the electrolyte should be inert at the same time the second criteria is the cation of the electrolyte and anion should have same ionic mobility should have same ionic mobility same ionic mobility now what do you mean by ionic mobility ionic mobility is a simple term which means the speed of ion the speed of ion now question comes what happens if the speed of ion is not same so let's move to our back diagram so now if the speed of ion is not same suppose if we are using an electrolyte kcl and suppose if the ion or if if the speed of k plus ion is more as compared to cl minus which is not actually but if then to it happens then k plus will soon reach to zn2 plus ion and it will neutralize sorry zn2 plus uh cl minus let me change the direction uh, suppose this is the kcl ion kcl okay so cl minus enters into the uh, anode compartment that is uh, zn2 plus and neutralizes it soon but here the sulfate ions are as it is okay and after a certain period of time if k plus will reach over here there will be a potential difference once again potential difference so both the compartment should get the oppositively charged ion at the same time at the same time so ionic mobility should be same okay let's move to our diagram once again so same ionic mobility that is speed of ion that is cation should have same speed with anion no the question comes what is how we will come to know that the speed of ion is same for that we need to simply find out simply find out the speed of ion that is speed of ion we need to calculate under unit electric field unit electric field that is nothing but volt per meter volt per meter or here we also can find out volt per centimeter so the ion should have same ionic mobility now let's talk about the agar agar gel what is the purpose of this agar agar gel so let me tell you agar agar gel is nothing but an colloid an colloid basically a polysaccharide a polysaccharide now you'd be having a doubt what what do you mean by a polysaccharide so simply polysaccharide is nothing but an polysaccharide is an carbohydrate so agar agar gel is a carbohydrate okay it is an carbohydrate and uh, this carbohydrate is having two part mainly the first one is agarose um the second one is agaropectin agaropectin this is the main content okay now the speciality about this one is that uh, this particular carbohydrate on heating gets converted into the molten state on heating this one gets converted into the 
molten state and let's get converted into the molten state at the same time on cooling on cooling it becomes a gel like material it becomes a gel like material okay so what we need to do first first we need to take the agar agar gel okay and we need to put the electrolyte inside it okay then we need to heat it up okay at the moment it is getting converted into the molten state we need to pour inside the inverted u shaped tube inverted u shaped tube okay allow it to cool allow it to cool and once it is cooled uh, we need to plug the cotton we need to plug the cotton so that the electro electrolyte should not fall down the other use of agar agar gel is it is used for cultivating microorganisms it is used for cultivating microorganisms so basically it is a culture media okay at the same time it is used as in emulsion stabilizer in food industry it is also used as a emulsion stabilizer i'm talking about agar agar gel emulsion stabilizer in food industry in food industry okay this is the use of agar agar gel basically what is the purpose of uh, using emulsion stabilizer it is also you can say used for thickening purpose just for thickening purpose that is the purpose of this agar agar gel okay now let's talk about the concentration of this agar agar solution it is nothing but 0.5% it is 0.5 Five percent. Here I am talking about this agar agar gel. Okay. Now let's move to the the concept once again. That is uh, the ionic mobility. That is the ionic mobility inside the ionic mobility inside the cell. Okay. So the cation should have same ionic mobility as that of anion. Here some of the orders are there that I can write you. All right. the order of ionic mobility of cation that is volt per meter is as follows that is h plus ion it is having the fastest ionic mobility which is greater than ammonium ion then ammonium ion is having similar ionic mobility as ag plus ion then comes ca2 plus ion and mg2 plus then comes na plus and finally comes lithium ion now you'd be thinking why this uh, lithium ion is slow, uh, slowest in six slowest in speed instead of having the small size so let me tell you the hydration of lithium takes place to a greater extent which makes it bigger which makes it bigger inside the solution now what do you mean by hydration that is the lithium ion is completely surrounded by water molecule water molecule and its size becomes bigger so speed decreases now let's talk about the ionic mobility of the anion the order is somewhat like this oh minus is the fastest anion okay then comes sulfate then comes uh, chloride ion then comes nitrate and then we are having fluoride ion and then comes finally the acetate ion which is having the minimum ionic mobility so this is the order of ions okay now once again comes to the salt bridge now a question comes in our mind how salt bridge helps us okay so salt bridge is used mainly for three task first it completes the circuit it complete the circuit that is a complete circuit okay that is in one compartment we are having the metal ion okay that is the zinc which transfer the electron to the copper okay like in this way and then we are having our salt bridge okay outside the outside the cell the electron carries the 
current and inside the cell the ions carries the current so this is basically a complete circuit the second one comes out to be it maintains electrical neutrality electrical neutrality maintains electrical neutrality as i have told you at the starting or uh, at the beginning of the video lecture itself that is uh, in anodic compartment z2 plus ion concentration increases which is neutralized by cl minus and in cathodic compartments u2 plus concentration is diminished and in that way the concentration of sulfate ion is increases sulfate ion increases which is neutralized by k plus and third one is the important one it avoids liquid junction potential it avoid liquid junction potential now the question comes in your mind what is liquid junction potential so don't worry for liquid junction potential we'll make another video okay so just keep on watching and i would like to end with a very important concept that is when some of the electrolytic solution or electrode such as silver or silver solution is used then we cannot use the kcl as an electrolyte in salt bridge because we all know that ag plus is highly sensitive to halogens and it forms agcl that is the precipitate so we should avoid this okay now some of the students are even having doubts or so zn2 plus combines with chloride ion then uh, then to we use this particular kcl in the galvanic cell but the main important thing about ZnCl2 is it's it does not get precipitated. It does not get precipitated. Okay, it remains in a soluble form. Now, when a particular ion gets precipitated or when it remains in a soluble form, for that you should have an idea about solubility, solubility and solubility product, solubility and solubility product which is nothing but called as S and KSP value. Okay, so all these things you have to keep in your mind and uh, I hope you have understood the video well. And, uh, keep watching. Thanks a lot for watching the video. Don't forget to share and subscribe the channel. Thanks a lot. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.